first fertility centre which prioritises the needs of gay people opened its doors. Natalie Drew and Ashley Phillips decided to set up the centre after their own experience of having children using a sperm donor. Broadcaster Anne Atkins has reservations about the clinic and the services it provides, as she thinks children should be raised by a man and a woman. Well, Natalie Drew and her partner, Ashley Phillips, and Anne Atkins all join us now. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start with your story first, because you, you've been friends for 17 years, and you've been together for nine, and realised quite quickly that you wanted to have a family. And, and so in about 2005, you started looking for a sperm donor. Yeah. And, and what did you experience? How was that as an experience? We started in 2003 looking for the for the donor and um, there wasn't many agencies out there that could help us or where we should go or, um, and we ended up, we signed up with an agency and, and paid a fee um, and that, that sourced us a donor um, and then it was just down to our own arrangements too. I think well, it's a bit of a minefield really because you don't quite know if you, some, some sites were charging an awful lot of money um, and you're not quite sure whether what you're getting is trustworthy or from a trustworthy source, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, um, well, I think when we started out, when we looked at the clinics that were available, they were all very expensive and they were fertility based for people who had fertility issues. And we were starting out and we didn't have fertility problems. We just obviously couldn't have a child together and we needed somebody else to help us that was like, say, from a reliable source and that we could trust. And at that time, there wasn't a great deal of advice out there that was specifically aimed at same-sex couples. Did you also find that you weren't sort of treated as parents, both of you? You found that the person who was carrying the baby was then given the, the medical, no medical care and attention and the support? Yeah, particularly when we went to antenatal classes, um, I, was, I was kind of seen as, as just a friend that was coming along to, to just help Natalie out, really. We weren't right. sort of perceived as being a couple that were having a child together, like heterosexual couples would be and it was it was similar um but a little bit sort of hit and miss really when it when it came to going for medical appointments and the actual birth so and the um the forms that we when we went to different clinics to register to say we wanted to start a family we were sort of it was always you know man and wife and none of the forms were adapted right and that still is the case in a lot of clinics now so you know even though you've made the inquiry and they welcome gay couples when you go along the, the forms haven't really been changed and so something you felt hugely strongly and passionate about because after going through this experience yourself you then decided to open the website first of all initially it was it was online um, and then because of the response you got to that then yesterday you opened the clinic so what tell me a little bit about what the clinic offers the services that it offers um, we're, we're mainly there to offer help and support and guidance and just to basically help people understand what their options are, that they don't have to go down the fertility route. There is co-parenting arrangements, there are different alternatives to, to the traditional fertility clinic if they haven't got fertility problems, obviously. Well, your experiences have been quite broad because you carried your first baby yeah. and uh, and that was uh, Gianni, who, Gianni uh, yeah. Yeah, who's five now. Yeah, she's right. five. And then, and then you actually carried the second baby. Yes. Um, and that is, um, and the, uh, what's, what's the name of your second? Kai. Kai, Kai who's, yeah. who's now three. Um, and, um, and that wasn't quite so straightforward. No, um, Natalie conceived first time when we were trying for Gia, but it took sort of over six months for, for me to catch him. So within that time, it was obviously quite stressful. We did go to the GP um, just for some, some advice really, and just some guidance, and he didn't really know where to direct us because we were a same-sex couple and because we were using a sperm donor, he wanted to get the sperm donor in and have him tested, but we already knew that he didn't have any problems because we'd already conceived prior. You put this down to sort of stress at the time, yeah. stress in, uh, at work? I'm a, I'm a secondary teacher, school teacher, so sort of obviously the run up to exams and things is quite stressful and then as soon as we had sort of the downtime when, we, when some students have left. But so you'd, use, you'd use the same donor? Yes. And, and now that the children are older, is the donor daddy? Yeah, they, they refer to him as daddy. We've got quite, quite an unusual arrangement really where they have contact with him a couple of times a year and they, they see him and we wanted them to, to sort of know who, who would help us to, to have them. And as Jude's getting older, she's, she does ask questions about our family being a little bit different now she's at school. And we just try to explain that, um, that our mummies love each other, but we couldn't have her together on our own and we needed somebody to help us and that's where... So it's very honest, very open. 
Yeah, we, we just feel that's really important. Um, when, when this, I mean, yesterday this story sort of hit the papers and everybody was talking about it. And the one criticism that people, I mean, in our hub, we kept having emails saying the same thing, which was, um, if there was a clinic that was solely for straight people, then the gay community would be up in arms. But that's not actually the case, is it? You prioritise gay couples, but if a straight couple were to come in, or an individual on their own, you would still offer the same service. Yeah, of course. So I think they picked up on that we said we're, we're a gay fertility clinic, but it's just because we want to tailor our support and our advice from our own experiences. And obviously being a same-sex couple, um, we feel passionate about trying to help same-sex couples get the best advice and support that they can. What sort of a response have you had? Um, it's, been, it's been quite positive. We've had lots of phone calls since um, opening the offices and people who want to, to come in and just have a, a, bit, a bit of a one-to-one -one chat really about how we can help them and what they want. Interestingly, um, Anne says that uh, she thinks that Gianni and Kai are at a disadvantage. Why is that? No, actually, Anne, I was going to pick up something you said in your introduction that uh, that uh, children should be brought... I wouldn't use the word should be brought up by a man or a woman. I, I, nobody could object. Nobody could reasonably <laughs> object to what you do. It's privately funded. It's not discriminatory. It's from your own experience. And I wish you all the very best because you are providing a service and... Your, as I was saying before we came on, your fees seem to me to be extremely modest and I'm sure you're providing something that a lot of people, you know, it, how could one possibly object to what you're doing and I wish you well. No, as part of a much wider debate um, <clears throat> as to where we're going in society, I am, uh, I am concerned when, actually not in your case at all, but when we start as taxpayers funding things that we're not necessarily you know, the majority of us have not necessarily gone down that route. Now, I'm coming at this personally from a Christian point of view and believe that the, the very best environment in a general way is a man and a woman committed to one another, married, for life, faithful, you know, exclusive, or hang, but hang on, that is the best, that is the ideal, right? Now, I've met Kai and Johnny, and they're gorgeous, and I'm sure you're wonderful parents, and actually, I think... Two gay parents are much nearer the ideal than one single parent, and yet as taxpayers. But, yeah, but didn't you fine. say yesterday when we were in a in research chat? Did you say that uh, the gay relationships are not as stable as straight relationships? They aren't generally. I mean, that's a statistical truth. That doesn't mean to say that uh, you know that Natalie and Ashley. Is that a statistical truth? Yes, it is. But of course, <clears throat> one has to say you know you could argue that that's because gay relationships are still not supported as much by society as straight relationships. But it is a statistical truth. Yeah, by, by, people also, like, by people like you saying that. We, that, that, that taxpayers uh, that well, necessarily should be funding. No, I don't think as taxpayers we should f fund things uh, that we haven't examined properly and know that they work and so on. And as I say, I'm much more comfortable with two loving parents of the same sex bringing children up than a single parent. Although we have lots of, you know, very good single parents. And as taxpayers, payers, we fund IVF for single parents. And, you know, so I have much more reservations about that kind of thing. But I simply think before we get, you know, one can envisage a sort of situation where in 10 years time people say, well, you know, why haven't you got taxpayers funding and why, why, haven't we, why aren't we providing, uh, you know, the support for this? I, I, I think we need a much wider debate about what Isn't this just society... a, It just seems all a bit old fashioned and knee jerk. Oh, I don't approve. That's what, what it is. sounds like. You know, the, 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 the fact that the taxpayers shouldn't necessarily be funding it, it all seems a little bit old fashioned. It, it's not an old-fashioned at all to look at scientific data and say all the, for instance, all the research shows that married couples are five times more stable and likely to stick together than cohabiting couples. That's not old-fashioned. That's simply scientific truth, you know. But so you can't why is have that? You can't have that <coughs> pigeonhole because life's not like you that can. anymore. No, yes, you can. Plenty of societies have said here is a package that as a society we support and pay so for. That what we, that's what we should say. This is the package we approve of and everything else outside that we don't approve I, of. I, we won't pay for. I think before we pay for something, we should be entitled to say, let's see what works as a general principle. And as a general principle, marriage works. So why, <clears throat> why as taxpayers are we paying for something that hasn't necessarily been proved to work? Okay. What do you I think? I think that now um, gay families are becoming more popular and, and it's only going to make relationships. It gives them that next step. You're creating a family unit, mm. and then you then you become part of society because you have, you've got children that are going to school, going to college. You're having the same experiences as a heterosexual couple will, will have, and I think that's only going to make 
uh, that we become more and more. Are you funded in any way by the taxpayer? No, no nothing at all. No. Well, I mean, just going back to the what we were talking about before, you see, my belief, and again, I, I reiterate that I'm much more comfortable seeing the children having two parents who love each other and are stable and are staying together. That is, I believe, much better than having one parent, although I'm not criticising people who find themselves in that situation. But it, my the position I'm coming from, as I say, is as a Christian position. That is not necessarily the majority view anymore, but I can only tell you what I believe. And uh, the, the very first book I wrote was on gender roles. And I came to it, I mean, this is 20 years ago, the first book I wrote, and I came to it as it, intending to write a book about equality. And I found myself, over the three years of research that the book took, mm. writing a book in, instead about interdependence. And became, I became passionately to believe in the... The, the, the complementarity of the sectors. Now, you can see, I, I, you know, for the same reason I, I believe passionately the House of Commons should have a lot of women in it, because society needs women as well as men running it. And as the most crucial place where you need, I believe, the contribution of both genders is, is the home, because children need difference. Now, they've got difference in you, in that you've got different mm -hmm. personalities. Well, we have to leave it here, unfortunately, but, uh, I mean, obviously this is, uh, this is absolutely fascinating. There's never enough time. Yeah, and, we uh, talk we wish, wish, wish you, of course, hour. we wish you the very best of luck yeah, with the service that you provide. Yeah. And we'll throw this open now and see what uh, what, what, our, what you think. Uh, obviously, you can uh, get in touch with us. You can email us this morning at itv.com. And uh, remember, we need your thoughts by midday if they are to go on air. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here's